My name is Brandi Bertram, and I am CEO of Bridges to Prosperity. We are an international non-governmental organization that exists to build bridges to better lives for people living all over the world. Bridges to Prosperity actually started over a photograph. The National Geographic magazine had published a story about a bridge in Ethiopia that was under disrepair, and the picture they had had men standing on either side, if you can imagine, six men from this village, six men from this village who would hold a very long rope. And the only way across that bridge was to climb hand over hand over the rope. And so our founder, Ken Franz, and his brother saw this photograph and they were engineers and they said, we can fix that bridge. And their effort over the next several months to raise the money and do what they could do to fix that bridge was the first bridge of Bridges to Prosperity in 2001. We actually built our first bridge in Rwanda in 2009, but it wasn't until 2012 that we really had a program here in Rwanda building bridge after bridge. From 2012 to 2015, we were working with people all throughout the country to really understand the need for trail bridges in the rural communities. And through that work, we were able to build partnerships and information that in 2019 launched a very exciting program. That was the first of its kind. It's the first time it's been done anywhere in the world. Bridges to Prosperity, in partnership with the Rwandan government, both national and local, committing to connect 1.1 rural Rwandans to the things they need to thrive through trail bridges. And that is how we got to where we are today. So our first bridge was in the Muhanga district, and we have partnerships with all 21 districts throughout Rwanda for bridge building. We've built over 350 trail bridges worldwide, connecting 1.2 million people as an organization, spanning 21 countries. In Rwanda, we have built 84 plus bridges, still building today, still uh, handing over bridges to community as we speak, connecting nearly a half million Rwandans. By the time we're done, we will have built somewhere near 300 additional bridges, connecting an additional 1 million Rwandans. So we're in the process of finishing 10 bridges right now. We just finished two. We're in the process of finishing another 10 right now. So even by the end of this Rwandan fiscal year, it will nearly be a half million people over our entire history. And we're going to build on that substantially uh, over the next three to four years in partnership with the government. We know that through randomized control study, we know that when trail bridges are put in place in a rural community, we see a 30% increase in household income. That is a significant number. Additionally, we see upwards of 60% increase in women participating in the labor force. We also see farmer profitability increasing by as much as 75%. Now why? The question is really what is happening that is making that possible. Our trail bridges allow farmers to access markets and inputs more reliably, more sustainably. They allow women who are typically responsible for transporting water and food and supporting children, they allow their travel time to shorten so much that they can participate in additional things. And speaking of children, this is one of my favorite statistics is that for children, the ability to access and come home from school reliably is significantly improved when a trail bridge is in place. Just a week and a half ago, I was at our Inharuka Bridge. That is a bridge that exists between two schools, a secondary and a primary school. And four times a day, a thousand plus children will cross that bridge to go to school. So the statistics tell an important story, but I think also the stories of our villagers, of the people living in the community, tell the incredible story of how they enrich their life. Our trail bridges typically cost 80,000 to 100,000 US dollars per bridge, or 8 million to 10 million Rwandan francs. Those bridges are designed to last for upwards of 30 years with minimal maintenance that is readily performed by the community. And the way that that happens, this is a unique part of our model, is that the local community are the people who are building our bridge. 
So local community members are selected, they are trained, and they build their bridge. A group of those are certified after the bridge is complete to care for the ongoing maintenance of that bridge. Our focus is East Africa. This is where, though we've built all over the world, we have said East Africa is where we need to focus our support, our resource, our energy. And so while we are very significantly building here in Rwanda, we are using the Rwanda program as a model for the rest of the region and the world. We have a program in Uganda that is largely partnership-based with the government as well. And we are also doing some very exciting things in Ethiopia and Zambia to further trail bridges. The future of Bridges to Prosperity is definitely bright. Uh, here in Rwanda, we are so excited for the announcement of the results for the next budget cycle. We are ready to partner with our government colleagues to build significantly more bridges in the year ahead and for the years to come until we reach our goal of 1.1 million rural Rwandans connected. We're very excited about that.